Welcome to the Healthcare IT Today CIO Podcast. I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you the most practical CIO insights and perspectives. We know your job is challenging and we want to help you be more successful. And we're here at the HCP conference in Las Vegas. And our guest is Skip Rollins, actually a second time a visitor to the CIO podcast. He's CIO and CISO at Freeman Health System. Welcome, Skip. Well, thank you, John, for having me again. Yeah, so excited to talk about you know a number of experiences and projects you've worked on. But before we go there, tell us about yourself and your organization. Well, uh, Freeman Health System is a, um, a very typical community health system. We have three acute care hospitals. Um, Lots and lots of clinics over a four-state area in the southwest Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Kansas. Uh, very high volumes. Um, mm -hmm. So we're a locally owned health system, so we don't answer to anyone. So we just kind of do our thing and, and uh, take care of our patients. Awesome. So tell us about a project that you've worked on in the past that maybe now is like really having an important impact. Sure, sure. I'm, uh, one of my favorites is... Um, mobile heartbeat project which is a mm. communication tool between nurses and physicians nurses and nurses it provides not only the ability for them to speak directly um, with context to who the patient is who's taking care of that patient but also the texting that mm -hmm. we do uh, so we average roughly 30 to 40,000 text messages per month and, and <laughs> generally about 50,000 phone calls per month between all of those providers so wow. we now have that in um, all of our ancillary departments use it, our transportation department uses it. So uh, we have about a thousand phones that are in active use in the hospital any given time during the day. And it is one of the cornerstone pieces of patient care at Freeman right now. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, think about that. All those messages were, were uh, pages or? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was paging, it was beepers, it was phone call to the desk and asking yeah, them to find the calls, physician. Yeah. And, and it was a, a horrible mess of things. But what we found is that it's reduced the, the nurses' traffic that they have to do, so they're not having to walk back and forth to mm, the desk. Nice. Uh, a lot of times, that, or sometimes that they're um, they're close to the patient, and they're, so like I said, it's got context to the patient. The physician wants to call a nurse that's taking care of Skip. All he knows is look at the list, he clicks one oh, button, that and that nurse is talking. Wow. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful productivity tool, uh, but more than anything, it's a satisfier, sour, excuse me, satisfier for our patients because mm. the people they need are quickly to them. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, that, if it's such a fascinating now. I imagine now they just rely on it. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, just part of their business now. We, we now um, are in the final throes of changing all of our emergency alerts, like code blues and things like that, mm -hmm. directly to the mobile heartbeat phones now and not, not paging them overhead as much wow. as like we used to because okay. they know who the code team is. It goes directly to the code team. And it just, again, it's more efficient. The people get to the patient faster and we have better outcomes. Yeah, that's awesome. My son works at Home Depot. They just implemented the same solution. So it's so fascinating yeah, that healthcare, yeah. I mean, obviously yours is more secure and more <laughs> sophisticated, right. but he's like, yeah, no more overhead pages yeah, at Home Depot yeah. because we all have cell phones well, and we can you message want it to be each a, other. a peaceful, restful thing, right? And if you're in the hospital, the last thing you want to hear is them purging paging for an electrician yeah. or a test fire or code blue or should i like be that. worried about yeah, that yeah. what does that mean yeah. so, so i mean it's uh there's a lot of benefits to it and we're we're, we're very big users of, of mobile heartbeat and we continue to find new and different ways to use it all the time yeah that's awesome how about now is there a project you're working on that's taking up a lot of your mind share and effort yeah the one i'd like to talk about is you know and i'm a big patient advocate uh for um at freeman and and that has a history uh, with my mom that had cancer and, okay. and i saw it from the patient side but wow. we are implementing a tool that is a touchless registration tool for our patients nice. so they will get a push from our system saying, hey, here's the forms that you need to complete before you come in. So they can do that uh, in the form of a, a question and answer on their phone. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have an app on their phone. They okay. can just, it's a text message. And we found that people reply much better to text messages than they do to email messages. Yep, absolutely. So it engages them that way. We, uh, we geo or geofencing them so we know where they are. We're watching them when they're coming to the hospital. We're watching them when they park in the parking lot and we're even going to communicate with them in the parking lot to say, hey, doctor's running 10 minutes behind, just hang in your car for 10 more minutes. We'll text you when it's time for you to come on up. The idea there is to really get rid of the congestion in the lobby of the hospital where you have lots of people standing around that yep. are all there for the same thing and try to sure. and try to make it more efficient for the patient. So um, 
we, we don't want them standing there waiting. We don't want them getting frustrated because they can't get to the provider they want to get to or if they're there for a, uh, a diagnostic imaging test or lab work or whatever it might be. We want to manage that traffic. So while this for them will be a much less frustrating uh, experience, for us, it's much more productive because mm -hmm. we don't have nearly as many folks having to do it because yeah. we're automating a lot of things where we're transcribing at the registration window for the patient. So it's um, it's much more efficient, much more patient friendly. Yeah, well, and I think you kind of have to. That's what we've seen, I think, you know, at Healthcare IT Today, is that with all the consumer companies coming in, patients are starting to expect a more consumer experience, which is what you just described. Absolutely. I mean, that, and that's exactly what we do. Part of our research was going to Target and see how they do it, going yeah. to Walmart, see how they do it, just to see what pieces and parts that we might be able to integrate with what we're doing. And, and you find that these organizations have got very, very efficient at actually keeping the people out of the building <laughs> Now we can't go that far yeah but they certainly are you know I, I went with my wife for target pickup by the time we park they're rolling toward us yeah so i mean it's amazing so the technology is there to make that patient experience similar and hopefully make it something that's more comfortable for them because they're pretty much everybody now is pretty comfortable with texting on their phone answering yep. questions on their phone so we know there's a population that won't be able to do that and we're making allowances for that as well sure makes sense are there other technologies or, or kind of projects you're looking at yeah. in the future that you think, you know, we haven't done yet, but hey, this might be interesting? Yeah, one of the one of the things, John, that we've been looking at and, and, and hoping to catch up, the, the technology will catch up with our aspirations mm -hmm. is natural language processing. Mm. So some we AI work with stuff. Se several vendors to, what we like to do is take that into the room where the physician or the care provider is interacting with that patient and that technology ev evolved to the point where it knows who's talking. Mm -hmm. And it knows when the physician is saying, yep. order this. Alexa knows me that. versus my kid. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so we think that that technology will be a cornerstone in making the physician and uh, the other care providers more efficient with their time. Um, and better documentation. Because, again, as we talk like we are, we're mm -hmm. capturing information that we need sure. to capture. The narrative. So it, that technology, it's evolving. It's getting there. But it's not quite to the point where we're comfortable with patient care. So gotcha. as we watch that, as we're, there's multiple vendors in the space, we're working with them, we've, we've done lots of demos and we see the benefit, but we're just watching that technology to get to the place where we feel comfortable. Yeah, I also saw some use, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense for the provider mm -hmm. and improving that, you know, right. if, you know, that that's a big problem, you know, the documentation burden, but I've also seen them trying to apply it on the patient side of things. Absolutely. Right. Like when you dump all this load of information to a patient, like, can you use NLP to say, oh, here's what really matters. So I think, yeah. you know, it's yeah. really interesting technology. Well, you know, patient education is always a problem because, mm -hmm. you know, you want the patient to, to be aware of what it is that's going to happen, what their experience is going to be like. And we give them information a lot of times, but it's usually a pile of paper. And we're trying to find things that are a little more friendly, you know, videos, things that can talk to them, you know, like book on tape, those kind of things. Uh, so as we tr we evolve as an organization to try to be attuned to using that technology, we, t we, we think that the patient will be much more satisfied because, you know, you know, even like on my phone, I mean, if I, I don't have to, I can just answer a text message. It knows that. I mean, I don't have to type. Yep. And I think that that technology has a place in healthcare. Yeah, And I think absolutely. that when it gets there, I think we, we want to be ready for it. Yeah, it's coming. So, you know, we always like to end with some career advice or some thoughts. Yeah. Uh, is there, a, you know, the best piece of advice you've ever gotten or maybe some advice you have for other CIOs out there? So for me personally, I'm, you know, gray hair. I'm getting kind of long <laughs> in the tooth. I've been doing this for a long time. But I would tell you that, you know, diversity, understanding your technology platform, understanding your EMRs and things is a, is a great thing to have on your resume. But also, you need to understand the organization, how mm. it works. Be, be, become a good reader of the situation. Become a good reader that of who the people are that are the players in the organization. I had a, several years in the consulting business that really mm -hmm. hit me with that skill nice. set. Interesting. So I think that understanding the people that you're talking to, understanding what they're looking for, what, how they see a problem, and not just walking in with here's the solution and trying to shove it down their throat, I believe is is a good skill. I mean, we heard a wonderful presentation this morning here about how to read people and how to interact with people. And I thought it was very, very timely. But I think that that communication skill is just as important as your ability to talk about technical things, talk, do strategy, because if, if the folks that you're working with and for don't understand you, 
then you're not really doing your job. Yeah, I, I think it was great of the HCP conference to bring that speaker. As I listened to it, I was like, oh, yeah, those are yeah. some of them I do naturally. And some of them like, oh, that's a good it idea. Was a very, very interesting topic. And for, for those of them that are people person like I am, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big face to face kind of guy, uh -huh. understanding that the the brain and how it works <laughs> and, and the cues that, that he shared with us this morning were, were it was an extraordinary presentation. And, you know, I I love the. The speakers that HCP brings in, I'm, I'm part of the board that chooses those speakers. Yep. And we constantly are looking for folks that are innovators, that are edgy kind of stuff. And I thought this morning was, was an excellent example. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Skip, this was awesome. Uh, thanks for being on this episode of the CIO Podcast. And thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for the CIO Podcast by Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Skip. Thank you, John.